Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to get started. There's not a lot of people here. I did not foresee a lot of people coming, so you in the back can scoot forward if you'd like. Um, you don't have to. Um, I'm going to talk today about something called not invented here syndrome. Um, I'll start off with a short amount about myself. My name is Dimitri Gaskin, as you can see up there, and hopefully you saw in the program. Um, I am a Drupal developer. I've been programming with Drupal for about five years now, um, and appearing at Drupal cons for four or so. And um, today I'm going to talk about not invented here, or ni for short. Um, so you may ask, what is not invented here, or ni, or ni, depending on how you want to say it. Um, not invented here is basically when a project or uh, a company or a group uh, doesn't want to use things that were not invented here. That is to say, they like to you know, come up with their own solutions for things. Um, it's talked a lot about in corporate settings, um, you know, how companies like to come up with their own tools, their own systems, but it's also important for us to talk about it in free software uh, like Drupal, where you know, we could be using, we could be leveraging a lot more um, other projects than we are now. Um, this last bullet point I'll come back to later, but basically um, there's sort of a difference between integrating with other people's code, that, that is to say sort of working with optionally versus building on top of other people's code. So I'm gonna talk about when we build on top of other people's code or rather when we don't and instead we invent it ourselves. So not invented here is sort of a problem um, Here's one, one thing that can come from that problem. Uh, reinventing the wheel. <laughs> it's, it's a little problematic. As you can see, it doesn't always work. I wouldn't want to ride that bicycle. Um, but I'm going to, so I'm going to look at, there's, so uh, what, the way I went, went about making this presentation was I, I thought, you know, okay, it's a big problem in the Drupal community, right? Well, it turns out there's, that's a, sort of a question. Is it a problem? Um, I asked a couple of my, my friends within the community and about what they thought of it and about like three of the three or four responses uh, thought it wasn't a problem. And I, I disagreed and I still disagree even given their justification. However, I'm just sort of going to explore this problem and um, hopefully we can reach a conclusion. Um, so the question is, do we suffer from ni or not invented here? Um, I'll go through a, a few examples. Uh, of not invented here, or what may be classified as that, um, and we'll see. You know, do we suffer from this problem? All right. Start off with the first example: uh, hooks or the hook system. So it could be argued that it's a uh, it's a version of the observer or the mediator design pattern. It could also be argued that it's not. And um, however, one thing that's not arguable is that it, we completely uniquely implemented this. Um, you know, this design pattern has been implemented uh, for years and years and years in, di in all sorts of different systems, um, various different ways, but um, sort of no nobody does it like Drupal and we decided to invent it ourselves. So, you know, if you, if you have some, some knowledge of uh, the observer or the mediator pattern, you might recognize aspects of it in our hook system. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's, you know, what it is and that your knowledge will completely apply to this. Um, another example is the uh, XML RPC library. Um, this was originally known as IXR. Um, I forget what that stands for. I was just looking it up earlier. But there was this XML RPC library, sort of the one, the main one for PHP, um, that we pulled into Drupal, I think, 2005, 2006. Um, when in the process of pulling it into Drupal, we completely rewrote it from scratch. Um, and it's had several releases since. It just had one in 2010, was the most recent release. And we haven't been able to pull in any of those updates because now our code is not compatible with their code. Um, yeah, so. Basically, we haven't incorporated their updates since 2005, so we're stuck with this old version. If this old version were to have a security hole, we would fall, you know, it would, it would be a problem, and uh, we, we'd have to fix that problem um, instead of, you know, letting them fix it, letting them do the work. 
Uh, another problem with something like this is that you know if you have learned how to use this this library and then you come to Drupal and you want to write some XML or PC code, um, you know you're kind of out of luck. You have to learn something new. So um, it kind of begs the question: Why did we do this? Well, I'll get to that later. Uh, I still have a, a few more examples. There's this function, the uh, filter XSS function. Um, this was also, this is not original in Drupal code. This came from a different place. It came from a library called KSES, um, which then became filter XSS. Again, we rewrote it for Drupal. Um, in this case, you know, it's the fact that you, you can't port your knowledge over, like if you learned this library and then came to Drupal, I wouldn't say that's such a big problem because it's literally one function. So, you know, it, and it's pretty easy to use. It's one function with two parameters, one of which is optional, but I, I didn't have room on the slide. Um, we rewrote it for Drupal, um, and as it says there, it, it's now unmaintained and it has been unmaintained for about 10 years. Um, and there was a, and pretty much now it's become like the uh, XSS filtering library. Um, for most PHP applications, WordPress uses it. I think Joomla uses it. Um, tons and tons of you know smaller PHP applications also use it. Um, and and I think 2010 there was a major security hole in it. And so you know it did it failed its one job, which was protecting people from cross-site scripting attacks. Um, and but due to the fact that we rewrote it ourselves, um, it didn't affect us at all. So. You know, there was there is some some benefit to uh, to writing our writing rewriting things ourselves or writing things ourselves. Um, simple test. Um, so you, you see here these are sample simple test results. Um, with simple test, simple test is another case of where we've pulled in some third party code, but there is. There was a pro or there wasn't really a problem, but we started sort of. At first, we were just using simple test, and we had a like very light wrapper on top. Then we started doing more and more and more uh, of our own code on top of simple test to the point where using simple test itself sort of became useless because we were doing so much of our own stuff um, on top of that. And then I'll take guilt for this, uh, or I'll admit guilt for this, sort of starting this effort to rewrite simple test. Um, completely just for Drupal, um, and now it's a problem because you know if simple test is one of the probably two or three ways that people test PHP, um, and if you learn simple test or another one of those ways, but say you learn simple test and you come to Drupal and you turn on the simple test module and it's not simple test, um, and you know that knowledge that you gained learning how to use simple test now you need to learn something new, um, so that's you know. We're putting people through unnecessary work here. Um, I think it'd be, you know, we could gain more developers, gain more traction if we used uh, code from others because other people would already have that knowledge. Um, and you know, you could come into a project knowing simple tests and be able to write tests instead of having to learn something new for, just for Drupal. All right. Next one, jQuery. Um, jQuery, we, we pretty much succeeded. You know, we just we used jQuery verbatim. We even use some jQuery libraries on top of that. You know, cookie form. Uh, you can see them there. Um, we also use a library called Farbtastic, which was actually written for Drupal. Um, funnily enough, it was written for Drupal, and there is now a color picker in jQuery UI, which we don't use. Instead, we use our own thing, which is um, written. Now it's it's separately maintained, and it has it is used outside of Drupal. However, it's definitely not the only jQuery color picker solution. Um, so along with you know, just using jQuery, we've had to write jQuery code on top of that. Um, but our jQuery code still feels like PHP code. Um, it doesn't really feel like fluent JavaScript. So uh, if you were some sort of, uh, you know, if you were a JavaScript programmer and came in, it wouldn't be the most intuitive thing to you know to help out and to pitch in because you're what you're sort of reading is JavaScript written like PHP, um, and that's you know that's problematic because you know again 
we want to be able to have as many people helping us out as, as possible, as many new developers coming in the project. Um, to get started with Drupal, it means you have to learn all these new things. Um, this is a bit more of a historical one. Um, the X template library uh, was used before we had PHP in our templates. Um, we actually went through a couple of iterations on the theme system, one of them where we had theme engines and X template was the main engine in use. I believe we did bring this actually in as is, um, but unfortunately later it became unsupported. Um, the maintainers of X template just dropped it and um, we sort of, we got bitten by that because now we were stuck with this pretty big library that was unsupported um, that you know we weren't the biggest fans of we could have still used it and maintained it, but that's extra maintenance work for us, and do we really want to do that when we can spend our time doing other things? Uh, next thing is our database layer. Our database layer has gone through quite a few different revisions. Um, we started out using uh, pair database compatibility, actually. Um, that was like way back in the dark ages. We said, after that we uh, moved off and we used our own compatibility layer where we simply swapped out a function name depending on what database you were using. Not the greatest solution. Um, and you know that definitely, all you need to know is, uh, or you, like basically like you, you used SQL, um, but if you wanted to use any sort of database compatibility layer, uh, or rather you know, query builder or whatever, well, you couldn't. Um, instead, we wrote our own. Um, we did base it off of PDO, so if you know PDO, um, the PHP database library, then uh, no, it doesn't get you very far, actually. Um, <laughs> we still wrote something on top of it. So, uh, oh, look, there's the author, right? He just stepped in. Um, our guilty of not invented here syndrome. <clears throat> uh, because other solutions did and do exist, um, so, as he likes to point out, it is not in fact exactly the same. Doctrine um, is a sort of database compatibility layer that's also an ORM, um, but it does sort of focus on the same problem space. So, you know, while Larry's not necessarily completely guilty, you know, it's, it is a problem. He will admit that. Um, we, we do use a couple of other libraries, just doing minor things, for example, archive tar library, um, that down, you know, un, unzips files when you download them from the uh, downloader and the PHP password hashing library which we also use successfully. Um, so, you know, clearly we have had some success incorporating other people's code so maybe it's not a problem. Um, other things, we have uh, pluggable subsystems. Um, so these don't really solve the problem of not invented here but they do leave the opportunity open for somebody to create a library that you know integrates with other systems. However, I think that um, oops, that's supposed to say utilization, not utilization. Um, you know that that's not really the solution because we still had to invent whatever lies under those pluggable areas, um, and just integrating with the library is not the same really as you know using it um, fully because the knowledge still doesn't transfer, and you know just because you know how to use say. Uh, What's it like uh, for uh, sessions? Redis cache. Just because you know how to use that, like sure that'll help you a bit. But for example, if you want to use it, you've got to write the compatibility layer with Drupal. You still got to learn that. Um, there, uh, we do support our measly list of two open standards. I'm sure there are others, um, but OpenID, which is currently on the way out um, of the internet, and RF RF. RDF, sorry, RDF. Um, so these are examples of where we have used ideas from other people, um, you know, and incorporated them in our own code base. I think that these are, you know, good examples for us to look to on how we can continue integrating that. Um, another sort of problem area for us is using outside idea, or not using outside ideas, rather. Um, so we've ignored best practices, such as, you know, encapsulation, abstracting interfaces, also, you know, uh, globals, uh, and that's um, when we ignore outside ideas like that, then it makes it harder for other people who come into the project to uh, sort of grasp on and to um, 
to build to build using Drupal because they you know they have a different knowledge base. They have to learn something new. Um, but if that's not enough to convince you, there are still questions. Is it a problem? Um, so, uh, so these are sort of uh, a couple of reasons why it is a problem. Um, it does take time and energy um, to build our own solution, and then we have we have the responsibility of maintaining it. Um, so, you know, it's we could be spending that time building more components on top of those systems instead of just building those systems or maintaining those systems. It also raises the learning curve. So if you learn one system, you know, for example, you learned simple test, um, like the simple test, not Drupal simple test, and then came to Drupal, you know, that knowledge doesn't completely transfer. Sure, the basic concept of what is a test and how does it work does. But um, you've got to, you know, you still have something to learn, in fact, quite a bit to learn. There is another side of it, however. There are some benefits, and we have had some successes with writing our own stuff. Um, to unmaintained projects, like in the case of X template, um, could, you know, that's a, uh, you know, that, that, did, that did hurt us, so uh, maybe, you know, writing our own thing, which we did, was the right solution. Um, and we could end up creating more work for ourselves um, in terms of integrating other code um, like it could be more more work to integrate other code rather than to rewrite it ourselves. However, that's not. I don't think that's uh, that justified of an argument in itself because um, you still fall can fall victim to other problems such as then later having to maintain that code or having to deal with security issues, which could go either way. So if there is a security problem in it, um, and the maintainers of whatever outside library you're using don't fix it then that's, you know, that's a big problem. And so that's one of the arguments for writing your own code because we do have a very, very big and very active security team. Um, however, if that, you know, that other project is responsible, then you can also, then we can also save ourselves a lot of work. Um, and then of course you have to deal with stuff like ugly code, ugly interfaces. Um, do we want to be using that or do we want to just write our own? Um, so. However, as I said, like I don't think these are enough reason for us to believe that you know it's a it's just a bad thing. Like I think, or rather, it's a good thing. I think it is a problem that we're that we've written so much ourselves. Um, and with that, let's look at why this is a problem. So here's the it's a problem face. Um, there are, I think, sort of two categories of issues. Um, the self-taught coders, um, or rather cultural issues. Um, so as you can see, like when, when, uh, when Drupal, like Drupal came from a background of people who taught themselves to code and people who were hackers, not really people who, you know, learned to be programmers in school and learned, you know, learned their list of design patterns, that kind of thing. Um, and in fact, people have sort of been antagonizing that and saying like, no, we want to keep our uh, code base approachable, um, and we want to be a, like we want to have something that, so that somebody can you know spend a weekend you know digging really deep into Drupal um, without having to have a huge amount of computer science background. Instead, they can just you know they can look at this. Maybe it's a pile of hacks. Maybe it's clean code. Um, we don't know because we're not computer scientists. Um, there's also, you know, we have been burned in the past, as I keep returning to X template. Um, we have been burned in the past by outside code. And so now that makes it sort of less incentivizing for us to want to continue uh, adding more code. Um, also, there, there were other issues in the past um, that prevented us from using sort of more outside code. Um, ecosystem issues. So the PHP ecosystem wasn't there. That is to say, most of the third party code sucked anyway, so you know, we, we could look to, to integrate something else to, that solved one of our problems, but it sucked, so we couldn't use it. Um, and you know, that's an interesting sort of point of contention there, like if it sucks, should we still use it because it's third party code and we don't have to maintain it ourselves? Um, and it, it sort of requires a case-by-case -case evaluation, but it, it could go either way. Um, and we could experiment with writing our own solutions. In fact, 
uh, there's this sort of mentality among Drupal developers of really liking to experiment. Um, when the when the internet like was sort of still, I mean, sure it was it was moving, but it's moving now. I would say faster than ever before. Um, however, so well, yes. Yeah, so that's why uh, we sort of we've had that mentality of, you know, um, let's do do it ourselves because you know we can we we like to try things out. Um, we're just hackers hacking our ha hacking our way through things, and the other code sucks anyway. Um, but. I think that's changing. Um, and so where are we headed? I think we're headed towards more integration and more than that, more util utilization of other systems. So uh, the web is moving faster than ever and we have to team together to succeed. Um, a great example of this is how we've been uh, teaming up with the Symphony team. Um, I'll show that in a couple of slides. Um, but we've been, we've been working together with the Symphony team now. Um, you know, they're helping us write code, we're helping them write code. Um, and with things like Symfony, the PHP ecosystem has finally matured to where it has good quality software. Um, our developer base has been shifting to now where p there are people like Larry who, you know, are champions of the let's use design patterns instead of hacks. Um, and people are more sort of cognizant of these things and they want to move in this direction more. Um, so we've had sort of cultural changes. And Drupal 7 is huge. It's really, really big. And to come into it, like not, you know, at least for me, it's like Drupal 7, I still don't understand Drupal 7. Um, and I think that building Drupal 7 on top of other, or rather building future versions on top of other components would help in the sense that, you know, it would be easier to understand what is Drupal as opposed to what is something else instead of having to understand this humongous monster that is Drupal. Um, there's also actually an interesting parallel um, with uh, how assembly, like people used to write in assembly languages. First they, you know, before that, you know, they did the punch cards, but they, there's sort of this movement from lower level to higher level. Um, so now people are writing in higher level languages like PHP or Ruby or stuff like that. Um, and so I think the Drupal community has sort of moved in a similar direction where we're no longer interested in just building, you know, these lower level parts, but instead interested in building bigger stuff and just and building on top of other people's things um, where we can let somebody else handle the, the lower level parts and instead we're more interested in focusing on the bigger things. Um, in a sense, we're, we're, we're growing up um, as you know people did with programming languages as Dries did from that picture you saw earlier. Um, so, um, you know, one, one big place we've done this is, uh, is Symfony. So we have integrated plenty of um, fun, third party components. I think this is by far the, the biggest one we've incorporated and in the most fundamental way. I mean, you could argue that our, you know, for example, cross site scripting filtering is pretty fundamental, but um, it's, you know, takes up nowhere near as much code as Symfony is going to help us out with. Um, it's saving us time, energy, and maintenance. Like there's a whole team dedicated to Symphony that's here at DrupalCon, um, but mostly dedicated to Symphony. That's uh, you know they're they're the ones sinking the time into developing Symphony, into maintaining it, you know, pushing out better f better versions, security updates, that sort of thing. So we don't have to work on that. Instead, we can focus on building on top of Symphony and building you know you know all sorts of crazy things. Um, so we can, you know, pull parts of Drupal out and make them rely on external components like Symfony. So instead, we can spend our time writing bigger and better things. All right. Um, there's still a bunch of outstanding issues. Not everybody thinks it's a good idea. Some people think it's too radical of a change. Um, as with any culture, our culture shifts slowly. Um, and, you know, are we, has our culture shifted enough to a point where we can integrate something as big as Symphony yet, or are we still taking those, those baby steps in order to, um, you know, build up our sort of, our ability to, our ability to do that? Um, are our developers becoming, uh, or rather, have they become yet, um, enough sort of wanting to, 
use more, uh, like less experimenting themselves and more using other people's components? Have people really gotten to the point where they want to uh, start building higher level things um, and start using, for example, design patterns? Um, or is that too radical of a change? Um, and then the last question, um, that's my own question, is, is Drupal 7 approachable? So I, I mentioned earlier, like a big thing has been we want to maintain approachable code and something that someone could just pick up on the weekend and start hacking on. And um, I think that, you know, we've already sort of crossed that threshold with Drupal 7 um, and to the point where, you know, I can't pick up Drupal 7 in a weekend. I can't spend three months and learn Drupal 7. I'm still battling with Drupal 7 trying to figure out because there's like so much new stuff added. Um, that I, can't, I can't figure every little part out like I could in Drupal 6. Um, so I think we might have even already crossed that line with Drupal 7 and now it's just a matter of sort of recognizing that and realizing that, okay, we've already crossed the approachability line. That should make it the decision easier, if anything, about whether or not we want to uh, start and continue integrating others code. All right, that, that's it. And that's a little bit shorter than I had imagined it would be. But thank you for coming and thanks to these people for helping out. Questions? No questions. Now if you could step up to the mic. I think like the natural follow-up question is like, you know, what's next? What can we, for those interested in kind of pursuing these things and experimenting around different ways we could pull things out or chop things off or add things, um, do you have any ideas or, you know, is there additional boffs or kind of how, how can people get involved in the discussion more, I guess? Um, that's a very good question and it's a very hard question because, um, you know, as I said, you know, we're sort of in the process of a cultural shift and it's not just that we can just start adding things. We've slowly worked to this point and are continuing to work on this. Um, you know, are we ready to be adding things? Maybe we are. Um, in that case, it's pretty much a matter of just finding like something that you want to add and adding it or you know proposing it proposing suge suggestions so I, I can't you know give you a def definitive answer but then I mean pretty much do what you want see if people like it and people might hate you but it's a worth a try <coughs> um, this actually came up uh, yesterday in the core conversation around theming um, and let me tell you that was an interesting conversation but um, the kind of general consensus in the room was that we are basically going to have to scrap a lot of how we built the theme layer and kind of start over. And I made the observation that the Symphony framework does actually include a, uh, a templating framework. Uh, I believe it's called Twig. And so this might be a really good opportunity to, to, to uh, kind of push more of this kind of code, util uh, you know, outside code utilization that could probably actually really solve a huge problem that we've been having with theme layer. Um, I think the real question going forward is how do we convince a community of very, very invested stakeholders who have, who have vested, in some case, nearly a decade of their life into writing this thing to kind of get over the ego factor and say, well, you know what, maybe we didn't do this the best way. Maybe there's a, a, a learning opportunity here. And you know, I, I, think that's, I think that's the big hurdle is kind of getting people to realize, hey, you know what, we don't know everything. Let's, see, let's play around and see what we can find that might actually solve our problems a little better than we did. Yeah, I mean, I definitely totally agree with that. I think the only thing is like people almost have the feeling like, okay, we got it wrong the first time, that's okay, so let's try again. And instead of letting, you know, letting somebody else try again who's already solved the problem, you know, we, we should try again. And I don't think that's the solution. I think that, yeah, we need to sort of recognize that maybe other people already have solved the problem or already will solve the problem for us. Um, just wanna speak, just not nearly as deep a cultural problem, but um, one area where I think uh, we are gonna need to look outside and, um, kind of broken record on this, this DrupalCon is 
at the JavaScript fr uh, framework level and the client-side frameworks, where uh, you know, as, as we look more and more towards services, we're going to need to have a really great, robust JavaScript framework layer um, that works flawlessly with Drupal. Um, I got a horse in the race, the backbone module. I think backbone's perfect. Um, but I think that's one where there's just no, there's no reason why we'd want to make it ourselves. Great ones exist. You know, so I, I guess there's two sides to it. There's, there's refactoring the existing code, and then there's as the new problem spaces open up, you know, really looking aggressively. And I think, um, you know, the contrib space is really wonderful for that. So, you know, if anything, we do have a pretty robust culture of, you know, taking things that were invest invented outside into the contrib space. Um, and maybe it's just about being very conscious about developing them in a way that um, they're really robust API modules. Yeah, I mean, I agree there that um, contrib has definitely been sort of more open to using other people's code for stuff um, than core has. Uh, it could be any number of reasons, mostly probably a factor of the fact that contrib moves so fast. Um, and is able to do that, um, but I do think, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good opportunity to you know to start exploring other other places that we can use other people's code, um, and yeah, I mean, that's definitely JavaScript framework is could be something huge that we probably don't want to be writing ourselves. Before you speak, the first guy on the slide there is right standing at the mic. Thank you very much to him for giving me many ideas for this talk. To answer uh, the earlier question about where to get involved in this, in this discussion, um, 